Hey, welcome back to Gifted Guitars. Today we are going to try and fix Rachel's SG style guitar. Let's get right into it. I've been looking at this guitar for the last month. It's been hanging in my garage, trying to figure out what to do with it. I don't really like the finish on it. I think that it's kind of, it just kind of looks sloppy and I can't figure out why there are lines going in opposite directions. Like the grain is going one way and then there's like lines going the other. It just doesn't make any sense to me. The back kind of looks cool. Like there's some grain there, which kind of looks neat. And the neck looks cool. I really like how the wood took the stain on the neck. It's hard to see on the camera, but in the right light, it has this really cool purple undertone and then it just kind of looks dark and cool uh, beyond that. So how are we gonna fix this? What are we gonna do? Well, I ordered some Glitter Blast spray paint. So hopefully what I can do is get a really sparkly finish on the guitar. I have some plans on if it's not the right kind of sparkle, but at this point, this guitar has seen so many different versions of itself that it's just become sort of a practice guitar <laughs> until I get it right. If I don't get it right, I'll sand it down and try again. But for now, I'm gonna try some Glitter Blast. I bought a bunch of this stuff. I'm really trying to get a nice glitter tone on the guitar. And since I like the way the neck has turned out and I don't want any potential glitter like texture on the neck, I'm gonna leave the neck alone, just doing the headstock and the main body of the guitar with the Glitter Blast. So, whew, wish me luck. Here we go. Okay, so first off, that worked out way better than I thought it would. This looks amazing. It's kind of hard to see through the camera here, but it's so sparkly, and the shade of purple is just perfect. I really, really like this. I'm shocked at how much I like this. I didn't think I was gonna like this, and I, like, this is better than what I had originally thought I was gonna do. I'm still not sure if this is gonna work long term, though. I, I'm not sure if this is gonna flake off, or if the top coat that I put on it is gonna crack or any sort of weird stuff like that. So I am skeptical. I am a little cautious, but I'm optimistic. This is way better than anything that I had going on with this guitar before. So the next step is to sand it down a little bit with sandpaper, see if I can knock off any loose flecks of glitter. And then tomorrow, I'm gonna spend the whole day just lacquering this up and getting it so that it's got a nice protective coat on the outside of it. Because if there's one thing I know about Rachel, it's she does not like loose glitter. She doesn't want glitter sticking to her. So if I can contain this haul and encapsulate it in the guitar lacquer, uh, she's gonna be much happier than if I gave it to her like this. And every time she played it, she had a guitar shaped glitter patch free floating off of her clothing. She would not appreciate that. I put masking on the headstock here so that I wouldn't get the darker part or the back of the neck sparkly. But after putting a quick coat of clear lacquer on here, so I've used a little bit of this on here already, I am going to take this off because I have to lacquer the rest of it and make it all uniform. So. At this point, the sparkles aren't coming off, which is good. And I need to take this off. So far, I have had quite a few issues with this. When I peel off tape, it always brings off lacquer or paint with it. And I've seen a bunch of comments. I, I read all the comments on this channel and a bunch of people told me to put uh, the tape on my clothing and then take it off before I put it on so it takes some of the lint and takes some of the tack off. I didn't do that this time because I wanted to try a different experiment, which I also read about, which was to heat up the tape using a blow dryer. So I'm gonna heat up the tape using a blow dryer this time and see if I can get the, the adhesive to sort of loosen up before I peel it off. And I'll let you know how it goes. I, I'm not, not totally sure what's gonna happen. This is kind of where the majority of the finish work is gonna come into play because this right now is rough. The glitter spray does not go on nice and smooth and glassy. So I need to put lots and lots of coats 
of this clear lacquer on here and really build it up so that when I sand it down, I don't actually get to the glitter at all. Like the highest raised up part of glitter should be the lowest part of the glossy lacquer. So I really need to build it up on this guitar and get it nice and thick. I don't want it to be so thick that it hurts the tone of the guitar, but I do want it to be thick enough so that all that glitter is encased in it and it feels glassy smooth. That's the hope at least. Let's do it. So doing work with guitar lacquer is actually something that takes a lot of patience because you put it on and then you have to wait an hour and then you put on another coat and then you wait an hour and then you put on another coat and then you wait 24 hours and you sand it and then you put on another coat and then you wait an hour and then you put on another coat and you wait an hour and it's this long process. So right now I'm in the beginnings of it. So I'm putting on a coat and then I'm going and doing something else for like an hour at a time and then I come back to it. It's an all day process before you can sand it and then you sand it and then it's another all day process before you can sand it again. And with this guitar in particular, I'm gonna be putting so many coats on it to try and level it out because it is really rough and it really needs to get level. Uh, this is probably gonna take me three or four days and I'm hoping to get it done before I leave town because I'm actually going to Hawaii with my family for a few days. And we vlogged while we were there, so that's on my family channel and you can check that out. I'll put a link in a place so you can check that out. But for right now, I really gotta get this done before I go so that it can then cure for a week before I do the final sanding and buffing and putting the whole guitar together for final assembly. It's a long process. It's a fun process, I really enjoy the challenge, but it is a long process. So we're gonna skip ahead a little bit. This guitar has given me a lot of trouble, and I'm not complaining, I'm just trying to work through it all in my head. So here's here's what's happening right now. This is the guitar, it's kind of cool looking, I think it's, it's neat, uh, but there are two major issues that I'm noticing already. And one is that there are these like patches that aren't as sparkly and I didn't notice them until after the lacquer had started going on so I couldn't go back and put more glitter onto it so it kind of is what it is there's purple underneath it so it doesn't like show up too much but you can kind of see some dark spots not a huge deal the other thing that's happening which is kind of I don't know <laughs> is I'm getting something called checking you can kind of see it there's a crack right here and a crack here and a crack here there's cracks all over this area of the guitar, and it's actually over the whole body. They're so small that you can't really see them unless you get up close, but when you get up close, man, they are there. And checking is something that happens to guitar lacquer, but usually because of moisture damage or because the guitar's really old. And there's actually something called relicking, which is really interesting in the guitar world. Relicking is the art of making a brand new guitar look like it's old and beat up and has been used for years. Why would you want that? I don't know, but it's kind of cool and people spend a lot of money on it. For example, here is a guitar that is brand new, looks nice and shiny and new, and this is the current price of that guitar. Here's a similar version of the guitar. It's made in a different place with different components. It is a more expensive guitar already, but it's also looks really, really old and beat up and like it probably wouldn't play a song. And this is its asking price. So checking's not that big of a deal. They put fake checking on guitars like this all the time. But this one has real checking and I'm not quite sure why. I was nervous to do the level sanding on this guitar initially because there was glitter texture underneath and I was afraid I was gonna get into the glitter texture. Now I'm nervous for a whole new reason. I might take whole chunks of lacquer off when I do this sanding. So I'm gonna do it super gentle. I don't even know if it's gonna work. It's just, this is like the third thing that I've tried on this guitar. But the important thing here is that we try things and we learn things. So I'm just gonna go for it. For those of you who have never seen me do this before, I'm doing something called wet sanding. It's a special type of sandpaper I'm using mostly water with a little tiny bit of dish soap in it. And my goal here is to get the guitar as smooth as possible, but uh, not shiny, not quite shiny yet. You can see when the light hits it how, how rough the surface of this is. And the side that I just sanded looks like this. There's a few little patches here and here, but the center here especially 
is nice and smooth now. It's not very sparkly and shiny, but that's gonna come later. Right now, it kinda has a matte finish. So far, it's going better than I had anticipated. I, I actually think that this might work out for me, which is a big sigh of relief. There are cracks, I can see them, but I don't think they're as big of a deal or as noticeable after it gets sand down. You really have to look for it. I think that the glitter itself is really gonna start sparkling once I put that final coat of polish on it. All right, there are a few things that I wanna say about this guitar. First off, and most importantly, I learned a lot. I learned a lot about how to make a sparkly guitar, what works and what doesn't. The back, I think actually looks pretty cool. It's super sparkly. There's hues of purple and like, deep red and like just it's it's really really cool so I do really like that and this is the smoothest glassiest guitar I think I've ever made I think I figured out the lacquer process pretty well where I had struggles with other guitars I did not with this guitar however the sparkle coat that I put on this initially definitely uh, rubbed off when I was kind of doing a level sanding on it and it rubbed off some of the shine, as well as some of the glitter itself. You can see right here, these are sort of like dead patches where it doesn't really sparkle. There's still color there. You don't see wood or anything like that because I did color it before I did that. Also, the way that it dried, it cracked a lot. So it's kind of hard to see on camera, but I'll try and show you. You can see it most drastically up here. It almost looks like a dinosaur egg or something crackling. It's all over the guitar. The entire guitar has that, but you can't feel it anywhere except for up here on the horns. You can kind of feel it a little bit. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. It's a look, it's different, and I can't fix it aside from trying all over again. And even then I wouldn't know if it would work. That's one of the weird things about guitar lacquer. You have to wait like a week and a half, two weeks before you see what the finished product's gonna be and you have no real way of knowing exactly how it's gonna dry or cure until you wait that time. I've <laughs> spent months and months and months on this guitar. I started this guitar before I started Jojo Siwa's guitar, so that kind of gives you an idea of how long I've been working on this guitar, and at a certain point I have to go, all right, I'm good with this, it's good. It is a purple guitar, which is what I was going for. It's a little bit past midnight right now, and I just wouldn't feel satisfied if I ended this without putting the two pieces together and seeing what it looks like as one unit. So I'm gonna do that real quick and then I'm gonna go to bed because sleepy times. Here is the guitar in its put together form. Uh, first off, I love the neck. I think it's a very cool color. It's hard to see on the camera, but it it's black at the edges and then it comes in and becomes purple and it's this beautiful purple. It's kind of what I wanted the whole guitar to look like, to be honest. And it goes well with the whole, the whole design, especially with the darker uh, fretboard here. I think it looks nice with the lighter purple. In terms of feel, this feels awesome. Like this is like, 
I would I would love this guitar. This is such a cool feeling guitar. It's real thin. It's that SG style. I'm not super familiar with SGs. I haven't played around with enough of them to really know what they're supposed to feel like, but if they all feel like this, it's pretty awesome. If you have a perfectionist mind, which I think is what's going on inside my head, this is the guitar that keeps on giving frustration. <laughs> I sprayed this in a different way than I normally do. Instead of hanging it, uh, with some wire, I mounted it onto some pieces of wood so that I could angle it around and do what I wanted with it. And I thought I had measured it out correctly, but I hadn't right here at the heel. So you can see this white part right here. It's not really supposed to be there. Not totally sure what I'm gonna do with that. I think I have some black lacquer and I can probably just touch that up as opposed to taking the whole guitar apart and starting all over again, which is, what my initial instinct was, but I don't think that's healthy. Overall, I mean, this is a cool guitar. I, I like it. I like it a lot. I think it's going to be really cool. I hope Rachel likes it. And that's going to do it for this episode. We've, we've got it. We've got the beginnings of a guitar here. I want to do something special with the headstock, which I haven't done with any guitar before. I'm going to leave it a surprise for this week. You'll check it out next week. And we're going to wire it all up and see if it plays. That'll be really fun. I'm excited about it. I'm excited to show it to you. And then I'm excited to give it to Rachel and be done with it. But in the meantime, be sure to subscribe, like this video if you liked it. Leave a comment in the comment section if you have something to say. I love reading your comments. I read them all the time. And I will see you next week. Thanks for watching, everybody.